Bwana asifiwe. Uh, thank God once again for this opportunity he has given me all this time to come and share the word of God together. And I'm brief, we shall be blessed together. I think it's my first time this year, uh, 2022. I think the on ninth we were the, the youth on the other side. And I believe that God has continued to care for you and even to care for me. So if I say Happy New Year, I think I'm not late. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And then also can see my wife can just say hi. That's good. Thank God for that. I'm fine. I want also to welcome those that, that are watching us through the online or any other social media that in being God be with us together even as we fellowship and share the word of God. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for our wonderful and mighty you are. Be with us. You have been with us all throughout our lives, and now, God, we have made us to come to your church. We have sung, we have testified, we have given our offerings, and now, Father, it's time for us to come and share that you are word, and just to say how, God, great you are, and how mighty you are in our lives. How we thank you, and we glorify you, because you are worthy. Be with us. Even, God, as I stand before that you are people, I'm just a messenger, a vessel, may you use me so that your people can get a blessing this day. For in Jesus' name do we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I thank God because uh, this year in this church, according to the theme that we have from the pastoral team, we are dealing with, we are dealing with what? Eh? Faithfulness to our Calling and then my life as a calling, family life as a calling, calling as a church, journey of faithfulness and then fruits of faithfulness. I think for the last two Sundays, somebody came and dealt with my life as a calling, and then we had the calling of, of a church, the calling of faithfulness in the calling as a church, and then today we are dealing. Uh, with what we call the calling in our family. That is part two, family life as a what? Family life as a calling. And I know this is a very sensitive issue. When we mention family, it's not something very easy. It touches so many issues in life. And I, I know with God's spirit and God's understanding, we shall end up somewhere to assist each other as far as faithfulness as the family is concerned. And I think oh, for the things that we have been doing together, the meaning of the word uh, faithfulness is just to be devoted. When you are faithful, you are devoted, you are honest, you are trustworthy, and you are dependable. All oh, those for the other meanings that you can have, but those four can guide us even as we continue with the faithfulness in life as a family. So we need to be devoted, honest, trustworthy, and dependable. What God, well, uh, the original purpose for God the family, from what we have read from the book of Genesis, you can get the clear picture of God, what God intended for a family, or a man and a woman. Adam and Eve sinned and Adam responded by blaming his wife. That's one we know from the book of Genesis. After whatever happened, Adam started blaming Eve because of what has happened. You can also see Abraham. Uh, God chose man married two wives and the other things in Shoporegan become seen. And the design of God was not moving well. That is from the creation upwards. Even you see the, uh, 
Then Jacob had several wives, like his grandfather, so many issues. The issue of family deteriorating. If you go from the book of Genesis, you can see what God intended continue to change. Uh, we can consider many narratives in the Bible. And even today, still we can see there's a lot of issues that are happening as far as relationships are concerned in our lives. In some cultures, men take many wives. Others, they have gone to an extent of having maybe the same sex, man and a woman, a man and a man forming a family, a woman and a woman forming a family. All those things are happening. And then you can still ask ourselves, what is the design? What was the purpose of God as far as the family is concerned? We have to uh, pour our thoughts very well. Let's set our minds on the things that are our what? Above. One as if we son. Praise the name of the Lord. The Colossians 3. Paul is saying, we need to have all those issues that are very nice, that are encouraging us, that we need to change and set our minds on the things that are above and not the things that are earthly, that we need always to meditate upon the word of God. The only solution that we can have in our family is just to meditate upon the word of God. That is what Paul is telling the church of Colossians. It is possible to be in love and not to understand. You can be in love with somebody, but not understanding what reality is meant to have a family or to have a wife and a husband. Marriage is a very serious business. Hello? Marriage is a serious what? Business. We need to learn if want to drive a vehicle in this country. You have to go for a driving school. Then after you are being taught two, three things, four, three things, then you are given what? And driving what? License. So that you can be able to continue in your life, in your life driving that vehicle. Any time that we talk about marriage and discuss all these agendas, is that we want you to be having knowledge and understanding so that you can be able to sustain your family as a calling. Sometimes when we call marriage seminars, retreats, counseling, as a matter of educating our people now to live as Christians, sometimes it, means, it seems like an interference of some other hidden agendas. Chetani Ashindwe. Somebody, Shetani Ashindwe. You know, when we call it, it's about marriage, it seems like an interference of some mother, it then what? And gender. Because you are mature, and you can maybe produce children, it doesn't mean that you know what is marriage. Now it means that because you are over 18, you are 21 years, you are 25, it doesn't mean that you know what is marriage. You need to acquire knowledge and the wisdom to understand how marriage, a family, is being learned. And when we teach these things about marriages, it just, we don't know like it's just, it is not just a matter of exciting the young people, not making the, 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 the church or maybe the gathering that we have that they feel they are very happy, but it means that we want people to acquire knowledge so that you can be able to move in this life as Christian and being faithful to one another. God did not put man and the woman together to punish them. Hello? Yes, God did not put a woman and a man so that he can do what? Punish them. Two are better than one. Hello? Two are better? But theoretically, two become a waste to one another. Sometimes you may say it's better to be 
Somebody say tumbi. Then it tumbi. Yes. When we miss the structures of the background or the pillars and the fundamentals of a family, you may decide and they say it's better and be one than being what? Being two. Don't assume that everything is easy in life as far as marriage is concerned and as far as faithfulness is concerned as Christians. The reason for marriage, we have three things. The reason God has put on them and they live together, there are three things. There's sharing, support, and the honor. Can we say together? The first one? The second one? The third one? Honor. And the three, they are the pillars of our marriages. They are the pillars of our family. If you don't share, you cannot support. And if you cannot honor, you cannot share. And if you cannot support, you cannot honor. So we can say they are the three pillars of our marriage. And the three of them, they really intermarry each one and another. For the selfish people, marriage is very difficult for them. If you are born and you have the spirit of being selfish, it's sad for you as far as marriage is concerned. Sharing is a problem. If it comes to sharing, Hello? 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 Yes, if you have that spirit, for you, marriage is very difficult. You can't be what? Faithful in your family. Because in a family, you have to do what? To share. Whether you have more, whether you have little. Because it's a standard of us being faithful to one another. And we can see, when God created Adam and Eve, what you have read from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 2, those verses it says, both of them were what? Naked. Both of them, they were what? Naked. So there was that issue of being us, openness. In marriage, for you to be faithful, you have to be open to one another. You have to be open to one another. It doesn't matter. You have to be open to one another because God has made us to stay together. But sometimes we have a challenge as Africans. Sometimes some issues for us, even as men as are concerned, it seems being openness to our, to our wives or to women, it is uncultural. It is not our tradition. We feel it. No, no. There should not be this. I should not say this and this. But one thing we should know, although we grow differently, although we do things differently, we have to understand God had a purpose for us to stay together as a family and we support one another. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When Adam was being created, Eve was not there. And also when Eve was not, uh, when Eve was being created, Adam was what? So nobody saw the process of the other being what? Created. But the end to come? Somebody say amen. Amen. Did you, those who are married, were you there when your wife was being born in that village in Mokoroini? Were you there when your husband was being born in Moranga? But it doesn't matter whether it's from Moranga, you are not there, it was from Meru, Kamban, but you have to come together. One has to fear sana. Praise the name of the Lord. God made, whether you are not there when I was created, whether you are there when I was, I was being created, we need to come together and share and support and honor one another. And then we become faithful to one another. Sometimes we try to understand one another and it's very difficult. And one problem in the marriage, 
is understanding. When we talk of understanding, is when we talk of being humble. Understanding it, it takes humility. And when you want to understand somebody, you don't need to be superior. You are not a giant to the other. For you to understand the person you are staying with, you are not superior. You are not a giant. But you have to come to the same level and understand one another. You have to come down. Ready to go down. You can understand one another and they know what God intends for the marriage and the faithfulness in the calling of our families. Misunderstanding, it takes failing to be humble. When you fail to be humble, you cannot understand the person you are staying with. And we can say misunderstanding can come when we talk about gender. When we talk of gender, a man is a, a man. A woman is a, a woman. And they brought in the different perspective. Young boys, they play football, jump up and down, climb trees, and their reference is what? Being what? A man. That is their what? Reference. Being what? A man. And even those who come from Masai, land, you have the Molan. They are treated to be radical, to realize they are men. So every preference of their point in life, they realize they are men. Also the same to girls. When they are growing up, they don't understand anything else. They play games together with the other girls. They do other things with other girls. Everything, everything. And their reference point is being young. A woman. Although you are brought, you attended the same school, you are raised differently. Although you come from the same tribe, the same village, but you are brought differently. Praise the name of the Lord. And you have to come together and respect one another. You have to come together, share, support, and honor one another and being faithful to one another. You are different people that come together, brought up in the different perspective or cultures in life. And when you come to problem sol solving, women solve problems differently than the men. A woman, when he has a problem, he is looking for somebody to talk to. Kweli ama ulongo. Somebody say amen. Women, are you in the house? When you have a problem, a woman is always looking for somebody to talk, to talk to. But a man, he is silent, thinking to the problem. Hello? A woman, when there's a problem, he is talking about the problem all over. But a man, is very quiet. Doesn't want to talk about the issue. The woman, when there's a problem, he is looking for somebody to tell. But a man shies away and runs away from other people. He doesn't want to be recognized that he has a problem. Hello? Yes. A woman, you are Nashida, at a kifika kazi. Kweka paso yake chini kwanza na simu. Anaita ile mama mwingine. Unajua? Muse yangu wako lala kwa nyumba. Hello? Women, are you in the house? Wana wasifuwe sana. Muse yangu wako lala nini? Kwa nyumba. Sichui ni nini na washanga. Onelesi watu ambia. Mama kaki aja ni ambia nini. Nakini unakuta. Ukifika tu mahali fulani. If there is a problem. Kitu ya kwanza. You want to talk about what? The problem. A, a man, hata kama aliwekwa kofi na bibi usiku na afike kazi, haezi ongea. Kweli ama ulongo. Wana asifue sana. Piki eni wanaume makofi. <laughs> yes. They don't talk. And these are two different people in the, in the house. When there is an issue, men they are silent. They like to say away. But women, 
Do you learn up? And when I talk this, it crosses all social classes of people, whether rich or poor, mindro, they talk. And I was meditating upon this sermon. I was happy to listen at Kaki TV. And one of our ministers, I think Karaja talks about the family, he somehow con uh, concurred with the, this sermon. That you can take women for literacy in Naivasha. Now, as you get to, they will form two groups, three groups, they talk, they talk, they talk. Now, we are going to eat lunch. They come and eat, take lunch. We are going to lunch is over. You Afternoon, we are going to go to They talk, they talk, they talk. John, we are going to go Nairobi. But if you come they will tell you, that was a wonderful retreat. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. They will be very comfortable, different. And, and remember, Muchugaji was saying, just prepare a retreat for men. You don't get a Tivele laugh. Who is the facilitator? Who is the speaker? Are we going to keep time? When are you coming back? Are we going to use our own vehicles? Or we shall we use a matato? You don't get it very laugh. But for women, these are God people God has created. And we have to come together and share the word of God. Hallelujah. If you don't understand the basic things on life, you can have it very laugh for you in life. And when you see things, Every man and every woman is looking for love in the marriage. Every man and every woman is looking for what? For love. How does a man interpret love? Respect. What does a woman interpret? Love? Understanding. A man would always interpret love to be respect. And the respect is what? Nipigie viatu langi, koti yangu ni safi, ilo nguo nitaenda na ayo kazi, hata soti kipotea ni vita kwa nyumba, na wea tu mwenyewe ndi olikuwa umevaa na ukavanya nini, na ukaweka mahali. So, when a woman is doing those things, a man interprets that one is what? Is love. But what a woman needs is just understanding. But some cultures that we come from, Things are changing. Women are also doing great things in life. And today, what was meant for the people who are born in the 80s and the 70s, what our moms really did to our dads, it's not what today our wives can do for us. Reason is that everybody is working. Hello? Wana asifuwe sana. Kama ni jamu ya langata kila mtu wako kwa? Kama ni jami ya theka road, Mombasa road, kila mtu wako wakwa nini? Kwa jamu. So if you expect, mukifika nyumbana at around 8, at utapewa, chakure yuekwe kwa meza, everybody is what? Is tired. What is required is understanding. Wana asifuye sana. Praise the name of the Lord. What is required in our family is what? Understanding. And even women can work over time. Some are managers, some are CEOs. And they can work even more than men. So what we expect from them might not come well the way maybe our fathers and our moms did to our fathers, those who are of 80s and the 90s. The one thing you have to understand, most divorce comes because of little things. Divorce comes because of Little things, being unfaithful to one another. Women always see little things. And the men seem big. Today I'm for men. <laughs> men, we normally see what? Big things. Like maybe there's a broken door, a broken window in the, in the compound, in the house. Those are the, the things a woman normally do what? See. Maybe there's a portal as you enter the compound. But women, they normally see very little things. Especially, paint coloring used to paint the kitchen as changed. 
Hello? How many can realize the paint in the kitchen is not? It has already done what? Change. But for a man, Ningumu. Ajua kwamba there is a problem in the kitchen, there is uh, the, the kitchen paint has started fainting, is you know, changing. But really, men wait until things are so big so that they can solve. But women see things at a distance. They see things at a far. And that was why they come to us as men and tell us, oh, these things are not going what? Going well. They see things at a far. But for us men, we wait until they are big. And for men, if you want to know, if a woman has been wearing a long dress, isn't it? Those who wear. And maybe the other day comes with a miniskirt. Utaskia mwana ume kwa nyumba amewaka. Guy, ningogani umeva, ningogani umeva. But if a woman goes for a saloon, you don't recognize. Hello? Wana hasifuya sana. Hata bibi yako ende saloon malangap, you don't recognize. Lakini akuji akiwa meva miniskirt. This is the only thing you see. But women want you to see, even when they dress well, they want to, you to recognize. Bwana asifuwe sana. Sasa pigieni wa mama makofi. Bwana asifuwe sana. Yes, they want you to recognize them. They are brought that way. They are there for us, and they are there to be with us, and give us the life that we need. These are two people brought up in different Grounds and cultures, we need to come and solve a problem together because marriage is a full-time job. We need to respect one another. We need to share with one another. We need to honor one another and be faithful to one another because it is not a one-day show. For young people, you burn with a lot of energy around moving town in company, in places, and everybody is proposing to you, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. But it doesn't tell you the problem in marriage. Everybody coming on your way. When you see the movies in the TV, oh, somebody is being kissed. Oh, I want also to be kissed. I want somebody to kiss me. Oh, And in the process, you don't understand what is marriage. I'm happy my India chairman of UD is enjoying the sermon. Somebody say, man, hey, praise the name of the Lord. Yes, this one is because we need to understand one another because we come from different lives. And not a joy for the young people. And I know you are in the house. When you go for a marriage ceremony, and then you see that white gown, Imevaliwa. Na people singing what? Ile wimbe ya kuzunguka inaitangu wa gani? What do you call it? You know this idea? Mo? Eh? Mo? Mo gidi. Very good. Wana asifuya sana. Mo ile tuoyo. Mo hamo nile ko. Eh? Gaine mwega. Eh? Mukizungwa. And then they see the at that. And then they think that is marriage. That is not marriage as you go around singing that song. When you see that in gown, it is just one for only three hours. From there, you go home and start dressing normally for the entire of your life. One hour, if you are son. After my magaki, I live in December 1999. Just three hours. You don't go home without that dress. So don't be moved by just these of three hours. Just what you need is to understand what is marriage and what is to be faithful in what? In marriage. Mana asifuwe sana. Mana asifuwe sana. We need to understand one another. We need to learn and do and understand how to share to, in our lives and spend our times in the work of God even as we fellowship together, because our God is great. What we need to know is that sharing is very important. Create a space. When you create a space and the time with your family, that is the time you become faithful. If you don't spend hours sometimes with your family, 
it's very hard. You cannot understand one another. When I got married the first five years, we are not understanding one another. Because any time we talk, I could tell her, you don't understand me. When we talk, I talk to him, to her, she also tells me, I don't understand her. And she is my wife. But these days, married to Mefika, ni mukono wa bwana. Bwana asifuye sana. We can talk. We can share. Bwana asifuye sana. Even for two or three hours, even six hours alone, bwana asifuye sana. Because we have understood what is marriage and then being faithful to one another. And I don't see the reason for you taking your wife or your spouses for for a beach, for a walk, for a hotel, for a holiday, and you cannot spend even two hours, both of you in the bedroom, without colliding with one another. Somebody say amen. Yes, there's no need. If you cannot stay together, and the men from today, kama umekosea bibi kaa kwa nyumba, muongea musuruishe. Wana asifuya sana. Hakuna aji ya kumpeleka kwa hotel, stay in that house. If it is life, if it is death, stay with her in that house, in that room, and you solve your problem. Yes, there's no need of going for an order. If you cannot spend even an hour together with your wife, with your family, for you to show that you are faithful to one another. And if you read from the book of Colossians that we have read, we led up to 17. If you continue 18 upwards to the end of that uh, chapter, it is talk of uh, wife to be submissive and then the wife to love one another and then the, 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 the husband is the what? The head and don't know who is the tail. One has to son. But what it means for a man to be the head? For a man to be the head is like a football captain. He is not the best player in the football. He is just there to coordinate. A captain in a football few days there just to do what? To coordinate. He knows the family, he knows the team members, he knows the striker, the mean road, the wins. He is just there to coordinate. He is not the best player. He has only just been given that law as a captain. And even for us men that are in the house, the families we, we, we share, we guide, is just a favor from God for us to be faithful to our families. And if you see, even the chairman of the board he is there to listen to other member board, board members. He is not there to, to bang the table and say, I'm the chairman, I'm the chairman, I'm the chairman. It's just a teamwork, bringing the ideas together so that the company, maybe or the society, can move forward. And they have the glory of God because all of us, we are called together. So for men, let us not be bullies, let us not be kings. And as my profession, I normally say, let us not be OCSs. He is the officer commanding. Let us not be my OCS here, family, as men. We need to stand firm and pray the same law as the work of God is concerned and being faithful to one another. On that time, we shall be doing the will of God in our lives and we shall understand one another because it's a matter of sharing, supporting, and honoring one another. Let it arise the strength in our women. Although it, it might be somehow threatening to you, but to see it as a victory to you. Maybe because your wife is getting a bigger salary than you, not, don't see it as a threat. Hello? But see it as a God blessing. And even for you women, don't go to very extreme because you are paying the house rent, you are doing everything, and then you say, now I can no longer be oppressed. I don't want to be oppressed anymore. And you tell your husband, you don't know where the power comes from. I'm the one in this house. Hello? We need to understand one another. If you don't pay rent, I'm the one who is paying in this house. 
It's not a matter of seeing you realize I am now most powerful person in this house. No, no, no. What you need is just to realize we are sharing, supporting, and honoring one another in life. And then, as we conclude, I would like to say this. When you are getting married, it's not, you are not getting, doing a favor to somebody. You are not helping anybody. Not your kunaida watu anaambia muzazi. Ah, wacha ni kusaidia ika mchana yako hii. Wacha ni, you are not, you are not helping. You are not doing any favor. You are not married to bring somebody up. If we want to bring somebody up, enda ununue chiki kule kwa mogoko kia kikuya, and then you lay up. You taona not realize that and there. But we are come from different perspective. We are there to come together. You don't matter so that you can bring somebody up. Uta mbadilisha. Kama anakulanga chakula. Tam, 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 tam. Uwezi badilisha yu tabia. Atu nambu ya wacha wacha kukula hivyo. Ataendelea kukula. Tam, 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 tam. You cannot change. What is there you need just to trust one another. And to realize that we need to be faithful to one another. Hallelujah. And you don't marry for sympathy. Don't marry because you have a sympathy. They have sympathy. If somebody needs sympathy, pastors are there, counselors are there. They shall give what? Sympathy and the counseling. So as an husband or a woman, you are not married so that you, you can do some counseling or pastoral work. That is meant for the ministers. One as for a son. So as you move around, women, realize men are there, they will tell you, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. A thousand and thousand will come on your way telling you you are beautiful. But they understand one thing. When men are saying you are beautiful, don't think their minds are there. They have only a target. <laughs> Hello? They have a target. And then you go around there saying, even the boss was telling me I'm beautiful. You are not beautiful. He has his own agendas. Don't go around all bouncing around saying everybody, everybody, even in Matatu, that out. They are saying I'm beautiful. Be very careful. Marriage is not about being beautiful, but sharing, supporting, and honoring one another. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, don't think when we are attracted to many people, then you think you are all that good. But God is there for us. And sometimes women can say, I'm the power of this house. And they maybe they may decide, they say that if the name you leave me. I will get other people to share my life together with. Let me warn you, dry. You will live dry the whole of your life. <laughs> yes, who's it? This year, when I go to Mwambi, I talk in Nigeria. Niko na wa na ume miyamo atesita kosa. Let me tell you today, as I stand here, uta kosa, uta part. Life is about sharing, support, and the what? And the honor. And then you have to say one thing and say this. The problem with the men is the eye. And if they couldn't be brand, they couldn't be good. Because men, anytime, whatever they see is good. It's good. But the problem with women is the, the ear. You know, they just like the earring, you are dressed well. When did you go for a saloon? When did you buy that clothes? It is very nice, and the process you end up messing without it realizing that God needs us to share, to support, and to honor one another. The word says, from what we have read, let us be faithful. Let's set our minds, what Timothy uh, Paul is telling the Colossians, that set our minds on the things that are above and not things that are hardly. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tusimame, tusimame tuombe. As we sing one song, let's all stand, let's all stand. Sikusote zamai 
Kisha yangu Hakika Hakika Na na so badili Sita ni fuata mimi Father in heaven, may you give us a spirit of understanding, spirit of sharing, support, and honor. A calling in our families and being faithful, trustworthy, devoted. God, we pray that, Father, may that be a part of our lives. May we glorify you in whatever we do in our families, O God. As the word has said, let's not focus on the things of this world, but focus on the things that are above. I want to pray for that family that need your intervention, that family need God togetherness and a good relationship. I pray this morning, Father, that you may embrace them. Where they have gone astray as a wife and an husband, a woman and a man, I am praying, oh God, May your power be upon them this day. May this year, 2022, Father, be a change, be a blessing, be an exhortation. Be a year, Father, they shall say really, we have shared, we have supported, and honored one another in their family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because you are worthy. I will exhort you and then glorify you. And now, the peace of God, that passes your understanding, be with you and guide you and protect you whenever you go, whatever activities that you shall have throughout the week. May the power of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.